On a windswept plain in southern England stands one of humanity's most haunting mysteries. Massive stones tower against the sky, arranged with impossible precision by people who lived and died over 5,000 years ago. They're 25 ton monuments to human ambition, each one quarried, shaped and transported using technology we can barely comprehend. For centuries, visitors have stood in the shadow of these ancient giants, wondering, how did our ancestors move stones that would challenge modern machinery? How did they align them perfectly with the movements of the sun and moon without telescopes or computers? And perhaps most mysteriously, why did they dedicate their lives to building something that wouldn't be completed for another 1,500 years? Everything we thought we knew about Stonehenge was wrong. In 2024, scientists made a discovery so earth-shattering that it forced archaeologists to completely rewrite the story of ancient Britain. The secret that unlocked this revelation wasn't hidden in some distant archive or buried treasure. It was lying in plain sight, right at the heart of Stonehenge itself. A single, massive stone that had been keeping an impossible secret for 5,000 years. When researchers finally discovered where this stone came from, they didn't just solve an ancient puzzle. They revealed that our ancestors accomplished something so extraordinary, so seemingly impossible, that it challenges everything we believe about human civilization itself. For over a century, archaeologists believed they had Stonehenge figured out. The story seemed simple enough. Around 2500 BCE, Neolithic farmers living on Salisbury Plain began constructing a stone circle using local materials and some exotic stones from Wales. These people had recently transitioned from hunting and gathering to agriculture, living in small communities scattered across the British countryside. At the monument's heart lies the altar stone, a colossal six-ton sandstone block, now broken and partially buried under fallen stones. Since 1923, when geologist H. H. Thomas published his influential study, everyone assumed this stone came from Wales, like many of the monument's smaller bluestones. But in August 2024, Anthony Clark and his team at Curtin University decided to test this century-old assumption using modern geological techniques. They analyzed microscopic mineral grains within the stone, each grain carrying a geological fingerprint that reveals exactly where on earth that rock was formed. The results left them speechless. The altar stone had traveled over 700 kilometers from northeastern Scotland, specifically from the Orcadian Basin, a region known for its distinctive old red sandstone formations. This discovery didn't just correct an old mistake. It revealed that 5,000 years ago, Neolithic people accomplished one of the most remarkable transportation feats in prehistoric history. And this is just the beginning of what this discovery tells us about our incredible ancestors. If you're interested in more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, because what we're about to uncover will blow your mind. To understand why this discovery is so revolutionary, we need to picture Britain 5,000 years ago. This was the height of the Neolithic period, when farming communities had recently spread across Europe. Most of Britain was covered in dense wildwood, vast forests of oak, elm and hazel that stretched unbroken for hundreds of miles. The people living here were recent immigrants, descendants of farmers who had arrived from continental Europe around 4000 BCE, largely replacing the earlier hunter-gatherer populations. They lived in small farming settlements, growing wheat and barley, raising cattle and pigs, and creating some of humanity's first permanent communities in Britain. Archaeological evidence from sites like Durrington Walls reveals these communities as more sophisticated than previously imagined. The houses discovered there show careful planning and construction techniques. But the scale of Stonehenge suggested something far beyond typical farming communities. The monument required coordinating hundreds, possibly thousands of people across multiple generations. 
Recent isotopic analysis of cremated remains shows that nearly half the people buried at Stonehenge came from outside the local area, some from as far away as Wales and possibly Scotland. The Altar Stone's journey from Scotland represents one of the most challenging logistics operations of the ancient world. Archaeological evidence suggests two possible routes, each presenting enormous challenges. The overland route would have required crossing the treacherous Scottish Highlands, navigating rivers and bogs, then traversing the length of England through dense forest. Experimental archaeology shows that moving a six-ton stone overland would have required 200 to 300 people working in coordinated teams, using wooden rollers, ropes and sledges. More likely, the builders chose a maritime route. This would have required sophisticated boat building technology and navigation skills to transport the massive stone down Scotland's dangerous east coast, around the stormy waters of northern England, then up the Bristol Channel or around the southern coast. Evidence for Neolithic seafaring comes from multiple sources. The transport of Welsh bluestones almost certainly involved water routes, given the challenging mountainous terrain of central Wales. Stone axes from Northern Ireland reach Scotland and England, requiring sea crossings. Even more remarkably, Neolithic people transported cattle and other livestock across water to remote islands like Orkney. The technical challenges were immense. A six-ton stone would have required vessels capable of carrying payloads that wouldn't be matched again until the Roman period, over 2,000 years later. These boats needed stability in rough seas, sophisticated steering systems, and crews with advanced navigation skills. But imagine the moment when that Scottish stone finally arrived at Salisbury Plain after its epic journey across land and sea. The same people who had mastered the art of maritime transport now faced an equally daunting challenge. How do you turn this massive cargo into part of the world's most precisely engineered ancient monument? The Scottish altar stone was just one piece of a construction puzzle that reveals engineering sophistication far beyond what should have been possible for Stone Age people. Once that precious cargo from Scotland reached its destination, it had to be integrated into a monument that was already demonstrating mathematical precision that would impress modern architects. The monument's development spanned 1,500 years, beginning around 3,100 BCE, with a simple earthwork and evolving through five major construction phases. But the most impressive phase occurred around 2,500 BCE, right around the time that Scottish stone was making its incredible journey, when builders erected the massive Sarsen Circle. These 30 upright stones, each weighing up to 25 tonnes, were quarried from the Marlborough Downs 25 kilometres away and shaped with precision that defies belief. The uprights were carved with protruding knobs called tenons, while the horizontal lintels featured matching holes called mortises. This mortise and tenon joinery, typically associated with woodworking, was adapted for stone construction with precision that has kept the structure stable for over 4,000 years. Archaeological experiments revealed the scale of effort required. Shaping a single sarsen stone took 60 skilled workers an entire month, working with stone hammers weighing up to 60 pounds. The astronomical alignments add another layer of sophistication. Stonehenge's primary axis aligns with the summer solstice sunrise and winter solstice sunset, with precision accurate to within degrees. The 56 Aubrey holes may encode a complex astronomical cycle for predicting eclipses. The Scottish altar stone fits into a broader pattern of long-distance connections that reveals Neolithic Britain as far more interconnected than previously imagined. Archaeological evidence shows trade networks spanning the entire British Isles and extending to continental Europe. The Grimes Graves flint mines in Norfolk represent industrial-scale production, with over 400 mine shafts extracting high-quality flint for tool production. These tools reach Scotland, Wales and Ireland, indicating regular trade routes covering hundreds of miles. Even more remarkably, exotic materials reached Britain from continental Europe. 
Jadiotaxes from the Alps are found in Neolithic sites across Britain, while amber from the Baltic appears in burial contexts. These discoveries point to exchange networks that connected Britain to a wider European world. But who were the individuals capable of such remarkable achievements? Recent DNA analysis reveals that Neolithic farmers largely replaced earlier hunter-gatherer populations around 4000 BCE, bringing new technologies and cultural practices from continental Europe. These communities possessed specialized knowledge that we're only beginning to understand. Archaeological evidence from Skara Bray in Orkney shows sophisticated understanding of architecture, creating multi-room stone houses with built-in furniture, drainage systems and heating. Similar techniques appear at sites across Britain, suggesting shared building traditions and technical knowledge. This consistency in skills and techniques across hundreds of miles hints at something extraordinary. These weren't isolated communities working independently. Instead, they appear to have been part of a larger cultural network that could coordinate knowledge, resources, and massive construction projects across the entire British Isles. And nowhere is this coordination more evident than in Stonehenge itself. Recent research suggests Stonehenge served as more than a religious center. It may have been a symbol of political unification that brought together diverse communities across Britain. The monument's stones literally represent this unity. Sarsons from local sources, bluestones from Wales, and now the altar stone from Scotland. Mike Parker Pearson, who has led much of the recent archaeological research, argues that Stonehenge represents a monument of unification for the peoples of Britain, a physical symbol of shared identity that transcended local boundaries and brought together diverse communities under a common purpose. The Scottish altar stone discovery forces us to confront an uncomfortable truth. We have consistently underestimated our ancestors' capabilities. These Neolithic communities possess knowledge, skills, and organizational abilities that enable them to accomplish feats that seem impossible even by modern standards. Consider the full scope of their achievement. Around 2500 BCE, while most of the world's population lived in small agricultural villages, British communities coordinated the construction of one of humanity's most ambitious monuments. They quarried stones across vast distances, transported multi-ton blocks using primitive technology, and assembled them with precision that has endured for millennia. Stonehenge stands today as proof that human ingenuity, determination, and cooperation have always been capable of achieving the extraordinary. Our ancestors didn't just build a monument, they created a lasting symbol of what becomes possible when communities unite behind a common vision and pursue it with unwavering dedication across generations. The secrets revealed by modern science don't diminish the wonder of Stonehenge. They magnify it, showing us that the capacity for greatness has always existed within human civilization, waiting to be awakened by those bold enough to attempt what others consider impossible.